Hey man, well, as promised, here's a little video uh, which will uh, try to shed a little light on the stuff that I've noticed uh, regarding your picking technique. Um, you see, in your video, apparently you're using your right hand to pick using your, uh, not this sort of a obvious, but a slight elbow and forearm movement. Uh, that's not what you aim for, man. Uh, let me grab the guitar. So, uh, I'm just going to place this a little bit lower. Let's see if I can do that. Okay, I think this is it. Alright, so. Uh, da, 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 da. Just a second, I want to turn on the, uh, the pedals. So. Okay, I guess the guitar is loud enough. So, I've noticed you doing something like this. Obviously, I'm exaggerating a bit, but even if it slides, I can notice it. Instead, I would like you to uh, use this motion. Grab the guitar using your forearm without applying too much pressure, because if you apply pressure, your hand is going to clamp up and you're not going to be able to pick anything. So uh, stay relaxed, let your hand lean against the guitar, and place the pick over the strings, and try to imagine that your right hand is pinned here by an axis that is perpendicular to the, on the guitar. You know, see, just imagine that there's an axis coming right from here and going through the guitar and through your wrist. And your wrist is only going to execute a motion around that axis, okay? So I'm going to remove my hand so you can see the imaginary point where the axis goes into the wrist, okay? So, up, down, up, down, up, down. Let your wrist be loose and relaxed and have some sort of a firm grip on the pick without uh, clenching your hand, okay? So no pressure at all. But the, uh, the grip on the pick has to be a little bit firm because otherwise it's going to slip from your hand and you don't want that, okay? And now that you have this stance, pick up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. This is what you want. You want to angle the, the pick a bit uh, if you want a more aggressive attack, and, or you can keep it parallel to the string if you want a more clean attack, okay? Slow, and try to keep the movements to a minimum possible, you know? You don't want to pick like... The movement is so large that it's going to uh, hinder your speed and accuracy. So you want to use your hand to moving as little as possible to great speeds as well as low speeds, okay? So even if you pick like this at this tempo, keep the motion as little as possible. Okay, try this and Regarding the, the transition between uh, various uh, rhythmic subdivisions, you have to anticipate that and know how they sound in your head. Uh, try a simple thing. Against a metronome click, put your guitar aside. Use the metronome. Okay, let's say we have uh, 60 beats per minute, okay? And a 4x4 four four time signature. One, two, three, four. Oops, sorry. Uh, Da, 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 da. Okay, so these are eight notes. Yeah, you know, two notes over uh, each beat, okay? Use your, clap your palms, uh, your hands together, in order to realize that you have, the, you grasped the concept and you can use any part of your body aside from the guitar to reproduce those rhythmic subdivisions. And now that you can play the uh, eighths, imagine the sixteenth notes. 
So when the, the beat starts, you're going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Oops, uh, it's not correct. I just have to keep the, the same steady beat. Two, three, four, one, two. See what I did there? I just played 16 notes on a, in one bar. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and eight notes in the next bar. Try to alternate uh, these two rhythmic subdivisions using your uh, your uh, your palms, you know, so that your system understands the rhythmic subdivision, and then try to play it on the guitar. You're going to see that there's going to be a, a great difference between uh, playing them like this, because your body is, and your mind are already accustomed to the, uh, the transition. And as an extra exercise, you could try to alternate between uh, eight notes and triplets. This is going to sound something like one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, two, three, one, two, three. See, it's uh, binary uh, towards ternary uh, rhythmic subdivisions. That's always going to cause a little bit of fuss in your brain, but. If you try to study them like this and uh, uh, manage to get your body to acknowledge the fact that it understood what you wanted to do without having to think about the fact that you have to play an instrument, because this is what we're doing here, trying to learn a concept with uh, removing the idea of having to learn an instrument, just having the concept in the body and then getting it out uh, using an instrument of choice. You can use a guitar, you can use a bass guitar, you can use a harmonica, you can use a, a sitar, a bagpipes, whatever you want. Your voice, I, any instrument at all. As long as you have the concept in your body and in your, in your mind, everything is smooth. Uh, regarding the uh, improvising part, well, uh, when you improvise, it's going to feel like it's free speech. You let the track roll and you hear music in your head and your body already knows what it has to do technique wise in order to reproduce the stuff that you hear in your head. But first, you have to get your ears acquainted with the G minor uh, scale for instance. Uh, as a first exercise, try to um, play the G minor scale. The position does not actually matter in this case because when we're talking improvisation, First of all, we want to make a musical statement. And to make a musical statement, you don't have to think about scales or I don't know what. You have to think music. You have to think about an idea which comes from your head. And then you have to use your theoretical knowledge and the weapons, the, the, actually I like them to call arrows in your musical quiver, uh, in order to uh, develop that musical idea that you already have. So I would like you to start from this. Think about, uh, aside from exercising the, the G minor scale, right? Uh, so what notes do we have here? We have G, A, E flat, C, D, uh, E flat, F, G. Somebody uh, plays the G minor, the, the G minor chord, for instance, and, uh, and you have the G tonality, uh, the, the root. Okay, so this is 
the first step uh, in training your ears to remember the certain flavor of a scale and then using it to, um, uh, to improvise. But first you have to get your ears acquainted to that environment, that musical environment, right? What better way to do it than be able to sing that scale? If you can sing it, it's the same thing with the, the subdivisions. The scale is in your head. Uh, I don't know, you see, I use two instruments to reproduce that scale. The guitar, sorry, and my voice. Take it from there. Cheers.